I'm looking at an exact price of GE, $7.90, as GE tries to rewrite its history. It reaches back to a former executive to try to write the ship. But wait till you hear about this former executive. They must really be desperate, Charlie. On, on the power system, yeah, John Rice was... They said he was, I heard he was kind of pushed out when Flannery oh, okay. came in there. I thought he was they fired said, and then fired again. No, no, they said he was, uh, he was, um, this is two years ago when, when John Flannery became the CEO. They tell me on the record that he was, uh, he, he retired. Mm -hmm. uh, whichever way you want to look at it, and there was a bunch of people that retired when, when, uh, when Mr. Flannery got in, got in office. Spend uh, more time with my family is right. code for you're pushed out. All right, we don't know. That's what they're saying. I'm just saying that there was a bunch of people that retired at okay. that point uh, to make new for, room for new, the new management came in. He's now back, and I'll tell you, um, I'm not sure how much he's going to work there, whether it's a full-time or part-time job. It's, it's not the whole enchilada. As I recall, he was one of the guys that he might have replaced Bob Nardelli when Nar Nardelli left back in the day. Um, so was he a Welch guy? Yeah, I think they all are kind of Welch mm -hmm. guys. That's kind of interesting. The, the other thing, the thing that's sort of odd about it, it's like one of these weird management layers, right? They, they bring in, another, I mean, like, why do you need this guy right now? He's probably one of the few who knows the business. This is a huge, voluminous yeah. business. And he, Which, they probably said, we got to get somebody in get here. Get somebody so we can it. sell it. I mean, I think the bigger, with this story, is sort of stepping on is the bigger story. And I'm, I'm getting this from a GE insider that tells me point blank, Larry Culp, he's the new CEO, spends every waking hour trying to figure out what to sell next. Uh, this is a company that, you know, he's made the determination that in order to take down the leverage, which is massive, mm -hmm. to pay off the pension liabilities, which is massive, to have any, any, any stake at a future, you gotta sell almost everything they can. Well, they're, they're trying to say down. he will provide mentorship for right. the people at the business. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, we had the initial uh, um, story then they denied this, that that Dave Calhoun, the former, the former vice chairman, longtime GE executive, who's now a black stone, that they were going to bring him back. They denied it, but they have been meeting. So he is now talking to former legacy people to basically figure out how, what to do with the company and just what the future is. But the bottom line is, is that this thing is being shopped like there's no tomorrow. It's being chopped up, according to, from what I understand, every piece that can be sold will try to be sold. And um, the reason is that, and it's, it's listen, they're gonna, if, if we had Mr. Culp on right now, he would be an heir of complacency. You would see him and do what he pulled, pulled with David Faber. Oh, everything is great. Uh, you know, we're just move, we're, you know, moving forward in a coherent manner. I hear it's not quite like that internally. I hear this is like, they know they got an issue here. They got to sell stuff. And by the way, more stuff you sell, the less revenues you get to pay off the, to, uh, you know, to basically service the debt and everything. You know, they have cash flow needs. So this is this guy's walking an incredible tightrope. The, but the bottom line is we hear that his main, main emphasis is on selling stuff. Uh, and uh, I can't tell you what's going to be sold next. Uh, you know, they're out of ba Baker's Hughes, Baker Hughes. But it's they're, not helping the stock that I, he's I, coming back. I know, I know because it, it's, it's, it looks like panic. You're bringing back a guy that left. You don't have a, you don't have a better bench? Charlie, thank you. All right. What else is new? Anyway? How are you going to roast your turkey? Charlie's an expert cook. Um, You're going to kill me My brother-in-law, Joe DeSalvo, um, who's an excellent lawyer investment banker, I must add. Um, by the way, was involved in vitamin water early on. How does turkey uh, go no, to just that? Just want to say, Joe is going <laughs> to mean... cook. Joe is cooking the turkey. Joe is cooking the turkey. Okay. Do you know Italian-Americans, what we used to do in the old days? I don't know if they still do this. I don't, but... We used, my mom used to make lasagna and manicotte, mm -hmm. and then we'd eat the turkey. Aha. Uh -huh. And that's how it went. The went. great Tom Menino, the mayor of Boston, oh, I remember used him. to make the best Thanksgiving meal what with he make? all that all Italian that, right? food yeah. first, and then the turkey. Good guy. I know. I R.I.P. I love that guy.